I don't know what to say. Bernard just keeps continuing to impress me with everything that he does. He made a move recently that I think is absolutely brilliant that I think we're going to see going forward for political campaigns. That's how brilliant I think it is. So we all know that endorsements are an incredibly crucial aspect to somebody's campaign. If you're running for elected office, then when somebody with legitimacy in a powerful position when they say that, you know, this is the person who I endorse, that really is important. But Bernie Sanders, he's a true threat to the status quo. So there's been so many people in positions of power, people entrenched within the system, billionaire CEOs who have spoken out against him, attacked him or criticized him for him to construct a list of what he calls anti endorsements. People who don't like Bernie Sanders. And because so many of these types of people are essentially speaking out against Bernie Sanders, what he's saying is, look at the people who hate me. These are the anti-endorsements that I've received. Now, I want you to put two and two together. What does that say about me if these are the types of people that dislike me? So let's check it out. When you go to his page, he includes a quote from FDR, which says, I ask you to judge me by my enemies I have made, and adds, as we fight for an agenda that guarantees basic human rights for all Americans, we will be opposed by the most powerful forces in America. Now, let's get to the list of anti-endorsements, because there's about 13 in total. The first one is Haim Saban, who is a billionaire that has spent millions of dollars buying elections for candidates. Um, he called for the bombing of Iran in 2014. He criticized President Obama's attempts to bring peace to the Middle East and attacked senators for urging humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip. So overall, he's just a horrible human being. But this is what he has to say about Bernie Sanders. We love all 23 candidates. No, minus one. I profoundly dislike Bernie Sanders. He thinks that every billionaire is a crook. He calls us the billionaire class and he attacks us indiscriminately. <laughs> Kenneth Langone, who's the co-founder of Home Depot, is worth $3.7 billion and he pays Home Depot employees so low that they are forced to rely on food stamps. Here's what he said about Bernie Sanders. In 2016, I saw Bernie Sanders and the kids around him. I thought this is the Antichrist. We have Andy Puzder, who is a former fast food CEO. And this is what he says about Bernie Sanders. All these proposals, Sanders proposals, they are just going to kill growth. Now, this is what he said in response to Bernie Sanders saying that we should raise the federal minimum wage. Getting to Lowell McAdam, who was the former CEO of Verizon, who made $20 million a year. This is what he said in response to Bernie Sanders issuing support for striking Verizon workers. The senator's uninformed views are, in a word, contemptible. Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, says that uh, just because it resonates doesn't make it right in response to Bernie Sanders saying that he should pay his fair share. Disney CEO Bob Iger said this in response to Bernie calling on him to raise the wages of workers at Disney. How many jobs have you created? Jeffrey Immelt, former CEO of GE, said this when Bernie Sanders called out his greed. GE operates in the real world. We're in the business of building real things and generating real growth. Lloyd Blankfein, former CEO of Goldman Sachs, said this about Bernie's candidacy. It has the potential to be a dangerous moment. Alan Greenspan, former Federal Reserve Chairman, said, Remember the basic problem of inequality is a fact that people are born that way. It doesn't have anything to do with the system. People are just born that way. This is what Third Way said about Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is an existential threat to the future of the Democratic Party. Leon Cooperman, who is a former partner at Goldman Sachs, said Bernie Sanders, in my opinion, doesn't have a clue. Bernard Marcus, co-founder of Home Depot, said Bernie Sanders is the enemy of every entrepreneur that's ever going to be born in the country and has been born in the past. Stanley Druckenmiller, who is a billionaire hedge fund manager, says if Bernie Sanders became president, I think stock prices would be 30 percent to 40 percent lower than they are now. Now, I'm going to link you to the full list of anti-endorsements down below. Um, I didn't read every single word, but you get the gist of it. These people who are rich, 
They exploit labor. They're billionaires. These are the people who hate Bernie Sanders. And there's a common theme. They all call him a threat. They say, oh, well, you know, this is bad for growth. Translation, this is bad for me and my pockets. So I need all of us to take a moment and kind of put two and two together. When there are so many candidates running in the race and you have this many CEOs and billionaires and hedge fund managers only targeting one candidate, what does that tell you about that candidate? I mean, let's just take a moment and parse this out. Elizabeth Warren, for example. I've always been a supporter of Elizabeth Warren. Now, you all know, I don't have to tell you and rehash 2016, she let me down. But I mean, she's running and she is continuously releasing policy after policy every single week. But let's look at the response that she gets from these same people who have given Bernie Sanders anti-endorsements. For example, Third Way says that she is a potential compromise candidate. If, you know, Democratic Party voters want a progressive, I guess, you know, they're saying we can, uh, we can settle on Elizabeth Warren, it's better than Bernie. On top of that, Wall Street, even though she's not funded by Wall Street, there are reports that they're warming up to Warren, not necessarily because they're trying to bribe her or butter her up. Perhaps they're trying to do that, but she isn't taking their money yet. And she may do that in the general in the event she becomes the Democratic Party nominee. But for now, she's raising money via grassroots small dollar fundraising. But here's what they say. They're saying if we have to pick someone and the Democratic Party base is going to go for someone who's a left wing candidate or more left wing than you bet your ass. We'd rather go with Elizabeth Warren than Bernie Sanders. So what does it tell you when you have people entrenched within the establishment who have all this money and power screaming at the top of their lungs about the threat that Bernie Sanders is, but simultaneously they're trying to convince themselves that maybe Warren isn't as bad as they initially thought. What does that tell you? That says everything you need to know about this entire election cycle. There's one candidate who these oligarchs continuously denounce and speak out against. It's Bernie Sanders. And it's because they know Bernie Sanders is the only candidate that can bring about fundamental change. And he may not even be successful at bringing about fundamental change, but they know that he's the only candidate who's actually going to try, who has the grassroots following that could potentially catalyze a political revolution in the same way we saw FTR catalyze a political revolution during the Great Depression with the New Deal reforms. So it can't get much clearer than this. How many more signs do we need? The stars are aligned and they're spelling out Bernie Sanders' name, telling us, idiots, you have a ticket out of the misery of this rigged economy. You have a ticket. It's Bernie Sanders. Why aren't you taking this? You're complaining. You're frustrated with the system. You see how you're being exploited. This is your ticket. Why are you not listening? We're screaming. The universe is telling you. Every sign is indicating that Bernie Sanders is actually what we all wanted Obama to be. And when we look back at this very moment in the future, I truly believe we are going to realize that Bernie Sanders was our one potential ticket out of this hellscape. And if we don't choose Bernie, we are going to be kicking ourselves. I absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, believe that. But it's not too late. We have a short window of opportunity. And opportunity like this maybe won't ever come knocking at our door again. At least in our lifetimes, possibly. So are we going to just be dense and say, well, you know, he's too old. So I'm going to go with Elizabeth Warren. No, I want the candidate who has these people like Lloyd Blankfein and Jamie Dimon shitting their pants. I want to go for the candidate who is called the Antichrist by CEOs and rich people. That's who I want because I know in my heart of hearts that that's the only person who is truly not compromised, who will in fact fight. And again, it's not a guarantee that Bernie Sanders will be successful even if he is elected, but this is our window of opportunity. Are you going to capitalize on it and actually support Bernie Sanders? Or are you going to go for someone who is a little bit more easier for the establishment to digest? I think the answer is clear.